Okay, well, I'm sure it'll pop up when it's ready to. Uh, today we are, well, we finished, uh, last time we finished the Edith Holden lap book, the big foldy out book. Um, and that's up for sale in my Etsy shop now. Um, and so it's time, hooray, to start a new uh, a new project, which is always fun. I love doing, I love it when it's new. I'm actually going to be doing two projects concurrently. Uh, one is Beatrix Potter, the tales that she wrote of her little creatures. And the other is Flower Fairies. So you, you'll see me doing different things, um, different subjects along the way. But actually, I'm going to duplicate whatever I do for one. I'm going to do for the other pretty much as long as the sort of patterns, etc. will let me. Um, so you won't be missing out on anything. And then at the end of it, we'll have two completed lap books. Uh, it's a pretty similar size to the uh, Edith Holden journal. This is just obviously one of the book panels that goes into it. This is the left hand side one. Then we've got the book and then another panel like this on the right hand side. So I'm using this as my marker for the size of the papers that's going to go in it. There I am, I can see myself. Um, so, I don't know if you remember or not, but with the Edith Holden journal, we had a, a loose um, booklet, I'll call it, folio, whatever, over on the left-hand side that you could untie and you could take away. And I like that idea, so I'm going to implement that idea again. Um, and it's going to be all Tom Kitten. <laughs> I'm going to try and keep creatures in their own little part of the journal um, otherwise it's just it gets too dizzy you don't know what who's who and what's what and what's going on and I must confess to you that I didn't I hadn't actually read the tale of Tom Kitten but I read it last night it's just so cute um, so here we are I had a piece of A3 um, card thin card and I've printed it double-sided and this is going to be the cover of our uh, little folio and it will go it'll be attached by ribbon onto actually this side here so that's our project for today is to fill this so I decided that I was going to do another one of those flippy zigzag concertina things because uh, I really like that and you can get loads of it takes ages to do because back and front of everything has got to be decorated so it's it's additional stuff so this is how long it's going to be. It's going to be four of these pieces and then a little bit on the end that will have some lace down it. So this piece is going to be stuck flat to there and then they'll be hinged on the corners. So that bit will come over there. This bit will be hinged on this corner. So it'll come over there. And then this bit hinged on here so it'll be there so you can pull them all out that way or that way so they all have to be decorated back and front so isn't that a lovely job it's just the best um justin um so the first thing to do this is the this is going to be actually stuck down and I want it stuck down because I want to lend, I want it to be stable on the bottom. The last one that I did, I did half a page. And yeah, you know, I got it stuck in the end, but there's a heck of a lot of weight hanging off this half a page. So this time it's going to have a whole page. And that's what we're going to attempt to get decorated today. This is card. It's You can hear it's not very thick card, um, but it's card nonetheless. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, cover that. I once again I have a DVD with images um, from the book and um, the right to use them so we're breaching no copyrights here and it's got beautiful images in um, if you know the story you will know where these all images all come from but there's loads of them and they're gorgeous and there's the fella himself, Tom Kitten, and his two little sisters. So I've got lots of stuff to work with. Lots. And there's the, one of the puddle ducks wearing Tom Kitten's clothes, but they don't fit. Oh dear. 
It's so cute, that story. So I think I had selected something that, I think it was this piece and this piece of coordinating paper that I want to, you'll see what it is. Hi, Charles. Hi, Debbie. Good morning from South Georgia. My goodness me. I bet it's colder here than it is there. <laughs> it's quite cool, actually, in um, in the UK today. We've had some, well, what we would call nice weather, but... Um, so that's going to cover the whole of that base piece. And then out of here, I'm going to cut... Get the right piece here. I've already marked off what I'm going to do, and I'm going to put acetate behind there with some tags. So let's aim. Let's aim to get that done today, even if we get nothing else done. But it would be nice if we could move along. So I'm just going to um, put glue on the back of here, stick it to the back of here. This is just paper, and then we can move on. I think my glue stick's getting a little bit nearly empty. Um, but I'll try it and see. Hopefully it'll have enough in it. I've just ordered a whole load of these glue sticks. I was really fortunate that the local pound shop had, had them in. But I don't think they were stocking them anymore. And even so, they aren't open at the moment for obvious reasons. So... Um, I've ordered some online. So try and get this into the corner and as straight as you can. Of course, there's no right or wrong side to this card, so, um, and it's going to be stuck down anyway, so you know, it's all right. And then take your bone folder or something else that's flattish and sometimes when you're using paper you get air bubbles so just i haven't on this occasion but sometimes you do so just work them out from the center outwards so you get a nice flat finish and this is lovely it's it's tom kitten it's cute isn't it um, and then I'm just going to cut that out. I prefer to do it this way. Then you get an, you know, you get an accurate cut. I find if I measure it for all you're certain that you're accurate, when you come to put it on the card, you're, you know, you're a mill out here, a mill out there. Um, and it's annoying. So I prefer to do it this way. And then I've got the two pieces exactly the same size and ready to go. Okay, so, right, there's our little Tom kitten, ready to rock and roll. Now then, we're going to put this on here, on the, over him, but I don't want to lose this, so I'm going to put acetate, I'm going to put acetate windows in here. And just to save you <laughs> the heartache of watching me having to do maths, <laughs> which wasn't funny, and in the end I had to call Justin, um, it's pre-marked out for us. And we're going to use a scalpel um, to cut those lines out. So I'm just going to use, I'm going to use my ruler actually and follow these lines down. This is the center section, which will be glued. These two will be where, these two squares will be where you see the um, acetate. So I need to leave that middle section um, without cutting it, otherwise the whole plan has gone up the swanny. This is a brand new blade in here, so just need to treat it with a bit of respect. I have done this before. You may, may well, Shaz, I'm pretty sure you've seen me do it before. Um, but it's a nice, it gives a nice piece of ephemera. Worth doing, I think. It just takes time, but it's worth being accurate. It's all these little bits of accuracy. They all add up in the end and give you a much, much, much nicer finish. So take your time. This is much more of a marathon than a sprint. For sure it is. I 
Well, it's been really, actually the sun's just going out now, but it's been the most gorgeous Easter weekend that we've had for years, really years. And of course, no one can get out and enjoy it. it it's really, well, I was going to say it's sad. It's not as sad as some families are experiencing. I hope wherever you are that you're staying in, staying safe, journaling. <laughs> it's a really good time to journal. And all those supplies that your husband or whoever might have said to you, you've got so many supplies, why do you need all those supplies? Now, this is why we need them, for now. <laughs> so you can see what I'm doing, I'm cutting out two holes in, in here and I'm going to then cut around the whole thing and put some acetate on. Acetate is the very devil's own to get things to stick to. I'll just tell you that because it is. Um, you can buy apparently some glue called canopy glue and it is specially made for people who make models and you know model aeroplanes they have that um, well plastic canopy that you know that goes over the pilot um, and they are notoriously difficult to stick evidently and so some somebody came up with this glue called canopy glue that sticks it I, I don't have any of that um, and actually for this one I'm going to try and use some double-sided sticky tape because I've pretty much exhausted all my glues and none of them really were much good for acetate I had to come down in the end to blinking super glue so I'm going to try um, the double sided it's it's an industrial strength double sided I actually got it from America I got it sent over it's a, by a company called Sailrite so hopefully that will work right so I've got my two pockets that, that will be pockets anyway so I just need to cut round here and then hopefully that will fit onto the other thing and we'll all be laughing hopefully eh And just up there. Just snip that with some scissors. Right then, let's just see what that looks like. So here's our, the back part, here's this that's going to go on top. It could possibly be just a fraction long. I'll stick it on first and if it is I will um, I'll cut it off. Right, so let's put the acetate on the back first, um, if I can remember where I put it. Here it is. It's see-through, so it's a bit difficult to see on my desk. So that's just going to um, be the right width, but I will trim it down a little bit. Um, and let's just, I've got a blue biro here that you can mark acetate with. So I'll cut it to there. So I want it just inside that frame, because you definitely don't want it sticking out. Um, that would just look, that would look unprofessional. We don't have that. <laughs> Hi Paula from Fairy Chic Emporium, how are you doing today? Uh, I can't see where the edge of this is. I'm going to have to line it up with something. I'm not altogether convinced that I've cut the last piece off straight either, which doesn't really help. Well, I think we're pretty square there. Let's, let's give that a try. Worst thing that can happen is we waste a piece of acetate. Let's see. 
Oh, that's all right. That's all right. So I'm just going to trim a little bit off the uh, off this length here, because as I say, I don't want this to fill up the whole space there. I, I, I still want there to be some card around to give the double sided sticky tape some chance uh, to have something to stick to. So first thing to do is stick that down and my double sided tape is here. I got a uh, three eighths and a quarter. I thought when I was ordering it from America I might as well. Um, but it, it's from a company called Sale Right. And they do good stuff. They don't mess around. They do really good stuff. So let's just put that down there. Boats. Yeah, I mean, that is what they do. They do um, outdoor stuff for boats. So if you're looking for some new cushions for your uh, cabin cruiser, I know I am. <laughs> not uh so right other other guys to go to they also sell sewing machines that are just to die for but all i got was some uh, tape did well resisted all temptations So when you're putting double-sided double tape on, make sure that you don't stick over the bit that you've already put on or you won't be able to get the, um, the last bit off. The top of the last bit. And you'll be cursing, so just make sure that you don't stick them over each other. And I don't need to do the middle because it's going to be stuck down once we've got the acetate in. I'm really fighting the urge to do it actually because it's like for the sake of completeness. <laughs> but I'm not going to. Right, so make sure that's pressed down and just get your scalpel blade. And just pick up the oh yikes that's sticky come on well we'd be complaining if it wasn't sticky wouldn't we Hold of the whole thing, so I'm going to have to take it from the other end. There we are. Be careful with your scalpels, you know, always put them somewhere where you're not just going to touch them inadvertently. So that stuck over there lovely I'm quite close there which means I'm over a little bit here on this side minus to fractions but okay lovely right so now what we need to do is we need to leave one side open because the um because the tags are going to go in there and actually this acetate hasn't gone over the whole thing so I'll show you a little cheat that you can do if you've got something sticky like that it will eventually disappear but if you've got some icing sugar then you can uh, use it for this purpose I shall show you thanks I'm just going to put it on a little bit of uh, I don't mind these ones being sticky but this is where we're going to go in and out with the tags so we don't want that to be sticky so if you've got any superfluous stick from your your tape just take your icing sugar 
rub it into where it's sticky where you don't want it and there you go that just takes the stick straight off it mm, delicious it doesn't have to be icing sugar you can use corn flour you can use um what else could you use i don't know any talcum powder yeah talcum powder would be excellent but you you couldn't lick your hand really your finger afterwards so that's just spoils for a little bit just got a little bit of ice and sugar on that you could live with that right so now we need to apply more acetate and then we can apply that to that and we'll all be happy so same 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 as before this um, patterned paper that I'm using here hasn't got a right or a wrong or an up or a down so you know just uh, you don't need to be as careful as you would with with some papers that have got a, a directional, let's say, are directional papers. So this time you do want to stick the central section down because it's, it's going to keep your tags apart. And on the end too. And make sure that you keep two pieces without tape on because otherwise all this is for nothing because you won't get your blooming um, tags in. It's just, I've just overlapped there, just a fraction that's going to drive me mad. So let's take this off, get it stuck down and make some nice pretty tags. Everything in the world of junk journaling takes time. You know, I could have this um, more prepped for you. You know, I could have the tags cut out, blah, blah, blah. But what's the point? This is what junk journaling is about. You know, it's about cutting and measuring and sticking and whatever. So you don't get too many shots with this uh, double-sided. So kind of try and get it right first time. There we are. So that's nice. You can't see it too well, but it is nice. Um, and I'm just a little bit long as I thought I was there. So I'm just going to square that up, which is convenient because that was the bit that I cut with the scissors that the rotary cutter missed. So now it's all square. So let's move on to the tags then. What what are we gonna what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Um well as I was showing you I've got loads of papers and images and stuff. Um that's too much of an all over pattern. Same with that really. We've used that on the outside of the book already oh that's cute that's really cute yeah so's that actually that's borders so i'll save that for when i need borders that doesn't say top tom kitten to me you know so that brings us down to these ones that's nice but i think it's it's kind of like too much it's tom kitten overload so i'll leave that to one side so let's just measure these and see what we're looking for. We're looking for something that's about three and a half inches. Um, and for an example, that's four and a half. They're not right. Mm, it's just over three and a half. What's that one? Just over. They're amazing, these images, aren't they? What's that one? Less than three. And three and a half. I'll definitely get three and a half in there. 
and less than three is no good, but this one works. Um, what about that one? Three and a quarter. Can I get away with that? Nope, too narrow. What about that one? Three and three quarters. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that one would probably work, as would that one. Yeah, they might be my two to go for. I think they might be. I think we might have found it. Hi, April. Where are you from? What do you do? So, yeah, that's three, three and a half. And that's three and three quarters. Three and a half is just okay. Three and three quarters is fine. And I'd like them in an ideal world to measure four or slightly less three and a half and three and a half yeah that's all right okay so we've got it we've selected our images it's quite torturous really but we've got them so just chop them out roughly For those of you that have joined a little bit later than the actual beginning, we are making a, another lap book. This time it is uh, Beatrix Potter and her little creatures. Um, and at the moment, I'm just making a, a start. We're just at the very start. It's the first element that we're going to do. I think they're absolutely fine, but I do need to. Um, I mean, they're just on paper, so. I need to reinforce them. So I'm just going to stick them. I did have a bit of a dilemma in my head here, and I'm sure it's one that other people have. Whether or not I was going to stick to white as the backing paper, etc., etc., or whether I was actually uh, going to go with the coffee stained paper. And for the flower fairies, I'm definitely sticking with white. Uh, they just suit, they suit white. But this I'm going with coffee stain paper because I, th I think that's right for it. So I've just got a bit here. I've used it for something else, but that's fine. There's still plenty room there. I'm just going to stick them down with a bit of blue, blue glue. My faithful glue stick. I do like this so much more than Prit. It just doesn't go so gloopy, you know? Because Prit can be the devil. Devil's own for going gloopy. So this needs cut out still. So um, we'll cut them both out together. The, the card and the image. No point wasting good cutting out when uh, one lot will do. And this one. Through the images are really lovely. I'm going to try and use as many of them as I can. Um, These, I guess, actually are probably going to be more of your journaling card type thing than a tag. Because I don't think I'm going to put um, corners on them. I'll cut this out and if it looks like it's a bit, a bit wide and it needs to be that, I'll just trim it a little bit. But I'll cut it first. We can always trim later. The other thing that I wanted to do with this journal, which is completely different to anything I've ever done with any other journal, is I'm kind of a bit over the inking thing. You know, around the edge of, of every thing, you've got to distress it with distress, brown distressing. Uh, I'm, I am, I'm just a bit over it. So let's just 
check that that wants to fit in there. No, it doesn't. I must have had this tape very close to the edge, so I'm just going to have to trim that a little bit. I want to trim it a lot. Actually, I might as well cut this one out as well and get them both trimmed to the right dimensions. See, this is what goes on in the world of junk journals. Things go right, things go wrong. It's just the way it is. Especially when you're doing lives. <laughs> things have a propensity for going wrong when you're doing lives. Right, so let's have a look. No, that is just a bit too wide. The tape is right up to here. So I'm just going to have to uh, chop a little bit off her away. I don't think she needs much, but I'm going to take a little bit off each side so she doesn't become lopsided. I'm probably only taking about a quarter of an inch off all, you know, all told. That helps the situation. Yeah, although to be honest, it's still quite tight. So I am just going to take another little, little, little bit off there. I'm just going to make sure I've got this square. Right, so I'm measuring that at one, two, three, three and a quarter inches. I'm saying that out loud so as I remember it for that one. <gasps> yeah, that's good. That's fine. That looks nice. I can leave her up a little bit like that. See ahead. But there she is. That's lovely. Uh, now then, similar sort of thing I imagine with this. It's going to need to be about three and a quarter. Um, it's not not that much over it to be honest. If um, if you've just found us, or just you know, please feel free to introduce yourselves. Uh, I like to know where people are from or watching from. It's always interesting. And if you like it, please could you uh, consider sharing it. That, that um sharing it and subscribing to my channel subscribing to my channel would be the best thing you could do for me i'd be delighted if you could do that um, and i'll thank you in advance i'm not sure if i cut this off um, oh no that's oh it's that lovely or is it? it's just a touch too tight a touch and I mean just a touch so I'm just going to take just a touch off this is making us work for our money today isn't it <laughs> our money I don't get paid right so there we are finally we have our two tags made a bit of a meal out of that but there we are so I'm not going to put um corners on them I don't think although it definitely gives the idea it's a tag doesn't it but when you take them out you can see we've still got um, Tom Kitten in there they slide in and out quite nicely um, and I'm just going to try what I was saying to you earlier about uh, not using ink around everything I, I did seek out this blue ink pad that I've, that I've got I can find a spare bit of paper, which seems ridiculous, seeing as I'm surrounded with it. Um, I'll show you what this ink pad looks like. It's a Tim Holtz one, obviously. At, um, it's called Salty Ocean. I'm not familiar with that. I didn't even know I had it, actually, till I went dumpster diving in my drawer. So 
so I'm just going to show you what that looks like and then I'm just going to show you what I've got in mind instead of that. So that's the, the blue. It's quite a turquoisey blue but it's quite nice. I mean, I'm not saying we put that much on but it's quite nice and would just be a bit different from the same old same old brown. Oh, the other thing I was thinking about doing, which I think might be a good idea, but I might get fed up doing it, is um, I've looked at my pit pens um, and found this colour that I think is perhaps just right for these lot. These Beatrix Potter lot. I mean, I'm happy to change it with each creature. This is just Tommy Tom Kitten's colour. So if I held a ruler like that, just quite close to the edge and then just coloured the edge in. Need to be closer than that, I think. I'm just wondering if that would be a nicer, nicer effect all the way around. Well, it's not too bad. I haven't come through too much. I thought it might just come flying through. But I think that might be quite nice. What do you think, guys? Yes or no? This is a, a pit pen with a brush nib on it, so you can actually get it on its side. So yeah, that's the ink, and this is the pit pen. What do you think? Let me know what you think. Um, excited to start a lap book, yeah, I know, I know you are. Uh, had the covers cut for a whole year now, finally watching some, some videos for inspiration. Yeah, well, the best video, um, the one actually about lap books, I would say is Nick the Booksmith. She, she's she got a lovely series uh, playlist all about lap, making lap books, etc. And the other person that I would look at is, um, I can't remember now whether she's called Claire or Lorna, but her shop is called Tailor Made Journals. And she just does exquisite stuff. Um, it's lovely and it's lovely to look through her her journals you know, the flip throughs that she does. Well, thanks, Shaz. You like them both. <laughs> Where are the images from? Well, they're from um, a CD um, called, let me see if I can find it. Here we are. This is it. Um, the Tales of Beatrix Potter. Um, this one's got four in. I've got another one that's got three. Um, and they are by a company called Crafters Companion. They've obviously um, invested quite heavily in this sort of thing because the last one, what was I using last? Yeah, the Edith Holden they had. So um, there's loads on them, loads and loads. There's quite a lot that's a bit sort of old fashioned for us nowadays, you know, sort of making cards and things. But that doesn't matter. I like the images um, and that's the main thing. So that's where they're from, April. I mean, if you have a look on eBay um, and put in Crafters Companion Beatrix Potter, see what comes up. Well, I'm going to try around these um, cards with this with this brush, see what happens. I mean, the worst thing that's going to happen is I have to fling it in the bin. Oh no, I was going to make the corners first, wasn't I? I decided I was going to make corners. I need my template. Um, here, here it is. It's worthwhile making yourself a template. Um, takes the guesswork out of it, so you actually do get two two corners that are the same. Just do one, turn it over, line it up with the side and the top. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You've got to put your own idea into it. Um, there's, there's no point just copying people. That's not what it's about, really. Although I was talking to a lady today, a lady called Isabel. Actually, Isabel has got a um, really useful, really useful shop with some really useful things in it. It's called Scotch Lodge 
farm and craft shop. Scotch Lodge Farm and Craft Shop. And the reason I came into, into contact with uh, Isabel is she actually sells three-in-one glue, which in the UK is like rarer than hen's teeth. So, um, yeah, as I say, I came into contact with her through that. Um, subsequently, we've emailed each other and, you know, she's just a really nice lady. This could be just a little dark. I don't know. I don't know. It's got to be, got to give it a chance. So as I say, this is a pit pen, but it's a brush one. So I can get right down at an angle. Oh, it's a bit like holding your breath, this, isn't it? Well, in fact, that is what I'm doing. <laughs> this might take longer, but it might just give us a different sort of look. Something original, something that's ours. I mean, anything that I put on my YouTube videos, they're, they're there for the whole world. You know, if you want to use the ideas or whatever, use them, please. I'd be glad to have helped you on your way. Right, so what's happened is I missed out the very bottom bit there. Um, apart from that, I think it looks all right. What do you think? I quite like that, actually. Oh, I don't know what I'm putting my pen away for. I should have started on the back, shouldn't I? <laughs> Let's be honest. It would have made much more sense to start on the back. I just want something that's going to distinguish us from everybody else. And yeah, it might take time. It will take time. It's bound to take time. But... Um, yeah, so as I was saying before I rudely interrupted myself, if you're after three-in-one glue, you know, if you've seen the girls in the States using three-in-one, you think, oh, I wish I could get that, and you look for it and you can't find it, Isabel is the lady. She has it. Um, and she's at Scotch Lodge Farm and Craft Shop. Yes, I remember that. Um, there is a link under this video, should you be desirous of that or any of the things that uh, Isabel sells in her shop. She does have uh, journal kits as well, which are nice. I know some of you struggle with buying digi kits. You can't print them out. You haven't got a suitable printer or, you know, in this day and age, you can't get out and buy paper, whatever it is. Um, so Isabel does kits. So there we are. I actually quite like that. I'm just going to take that little bit off the bottom because it's it's going to annoy me otherwise. I think as we get better at this, it might be the way forward. What do you think? Yep. Yeah. Are you still in there? Um, I don't know yet. I'm just going to put this in here and see. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all right, that's all right. So because of this, we now know that there's definitely a tag there to pull. Hooray! Um, I'll just whip round here. Oh, I haven't done my corners. I like to try and keep it something exciting for you to watch. Well, you know, exciting. We're making junk journals, so, you know, it's never going to be... Um, it's never going to be raunchy or rude or anything. But as exciting as junk journals can get, I like I do like to get them something that you're, you're going to enjoy watching. And I appreciate that going around somewhere with a ruler and a blue pit pen is kind of not the most exciting. Um, but it's all got to be done. And if, if I'm going to show you sort of bit by bit me doing this junk journal, you know, I will try and get some bits prepared, you know, where there's duplication. You don't need to see me making every single tag that's going to go in the in the book. So, you know, I'll be as prepared as I can, but this is right at the beginning and I wanted to talk to you about this um, idea of going round things with pen. But nobody seems to have a an idea one way or the other, really, about whether it's working or not. Yes, I love ink. 
the booksmith and Eva the Bohemian crafting and Singita coffee stains. Oh, great. Nick, not ink. Oh, Nick, sorry, Nick. Nick the booksmith's fantastic, isn't she? Uh, yes, I watched some of the Bohemian lady after Fiona recommended her. Um, I use art glitter glue and Fabri-Tac, yeah. Has Isabel got Fabri-Tac? I can't remember. Um, well, my my stuff came yesterday, um, the Beacon 3-in-1, and I've used it, and it sticks. Yes, yeah. And, yes, Isabel's got the Fabri-Tac, so Isabel is a one-stop shop, okay? And, and zip dry glue. And zip dry glue, whatever that is. There's loads for us to try. Yeah, I can feel that I could get quite quick at this with time. You need to be so near that edge. I did try a Sharpie before I came on and I, I couldn't get the width. So I sought out my big box of pit pens. And some of you may remember the Bohemian Journal that I did. Um, well, just to tell you that I sold it on Saturday and the Blue Journal um, book, uh, the Blue Butterfly Jump Green Journal. Journal. Yeah, uh, uh, both the Bohemian and the um, Blue, Butterfly. Blue Butterfly, come on, uh, Junk Journals were ring, ring bound and they, they both sold this weekend so um, I obviously can't get them out to the post I can't go out to the post office anyway because I'm banned from leaving the house um, but just not go out on tomorrow um, you can pay for your postage now online did you know so you've just got to literally go in and well just put your parcel down you don't have to fiddle on with money or anything like that you do it all online and then you you know it saves any contact when you're out which is all good yeah i can see i'd get quicker at this and i can also see i like it it's different it's just something different different is good it's not always good it's not always good But in this instance, I think it's good. So you see how I'm using the tip of th this. Um... Oh, thanks, Isabel. Here you are. <laughs> I was just extolling the virtues of your craft shop to everyone. Um, so yeah, three in one zip and fabric tack. So what can I say? We found it very, very difficult to source indeed. I'm very glad to have found Isabel. So, um, yeah, I tried it with a Sharpie. It wouldn't work because there's no yield in the Sharpie nib. So this is what's called... Um, I don't know if it's going to focus on that. There we are. Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen, and it's colour ultramarine, which is a beautiful colour. And it has this on the end of B. Um, in my set, I've got different size nibs, etc., etc., um, but this is a B, and it means it's a brush tip. Um, I don't quite know. I'll show you one here. So you can get it sideways down, or nice and thin, or whatever. It's a very useful. Uh, the brush tip is really useful. Uh, they're not cheap, but they're lovely pens. I've had mine for years. Right, so that's that. That can go in there. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do, I probably will do some sewing around it, um, but I don't think that I need to bother you with that today, possibly not, I think. Um, now, do I need to put blue around here? Well, what's the point if I don't? This whole, I'm really sorry um, about this whole thing, because it's just about me putting blue around things. But let's talk about how we progress from here, that's slightly more interesting. The next thing that happens is another sheet of the, let's call it base card. This is going to be stuck down in the book. 
let's pretend this is the bit of the book so it's going to be stuck down actually that's wrong isn't it? it's going in here that's stuck down to there and then we get this other piece which is going to be stuck onto there so i could do that now but why bother with this bit because it's only going to be sellotaped up the back because i'm going to you know be decorated so you won't see the sellotape so that's you know that's kind of coming up next um i'm, just, I'm gonna i'm gonna blue around here i mean you know you've got to give it a fair shot and if it doesn't look right well we need to know now New stuff. New stuff's brilliant. It's so exciting, isn't it? I, I got those um, CDs, you know, the com uh, Crafters Companion CDs. I was so excited about it. It's ridiculous, really. But, you know, we need this stuff now, don't we? More than ever. That's what I would say, anyway. So just in an absolute hair from the edge. Otherwise, um, the brush isn't wide enough to fill it all in. It's just a little bit too far in. Well, we've had, sad to say, people breaching the the uh, social distancing, isolation, whatever you want, however you want to call it, around here. We've had families having barbecues. We've had people, I don't know what they're doing, taking stuff out of the house and smashing it up and putting it in the back of a pickup truck. I don't know where they're going to take it. I fear for where they're going to take it. Um, I just need something in here to stop me going onto the underneath part. Should have done this. Should have done this already, but I didn't. But we we'll learn. We we'll learn as we go along, all of us. I imagine this would look really nice in sort of black if you were doing a kind of deco thing or a monochrome thing. I think it would look really snazzy. It's coming together though, isn't it? Can you see that? Looks nice, doesn't it? Looks nicely finished. A bit more finished than the um I'm 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 taking a rain check I'm doing around here. <laughs> so I'll put my uh put the tags in and let's see about joining this next piece on, what we need to do, etc. etc. Right, so that's two tags, right? So the next thing that happens is this naked piece of card gets joined to that. Now, I'm joining it with sellotape, but I'm going to put two bits of sellotape together. Uh, we used to do that edging for foliage effect. Did you? I thought I just invented it. Of course, you invent nothing doing this. You just keep reinventing the same stuff. Um, sellotape, yeah. Right. This is, this seems ridiculous when you see me do it. You think, why on earth is she doing that? But one piece of sellotape on its own doesn't actually have much inherent strength. It does if you pull it one way, but if, if it just gets caught and tears, it'll tear down the whole thing. And it could tear a page or clean off of your junk journal and perish that thought. I mean, all the hours that we spend putting it together. So... If ever you find the end, um, 
let me know. Right, there we are. So I'm going to put a length of it down, sticky side up. And then I'm going to take the sellotape and go over that. Surprisingly enough, it's sticky. I just made a hash of that last bit, but it doesn't matter. Right, so what happens is this. We now have a piece of tape that isn't sticky at all, but it has all the properties that we want of sellotape. So I can bend it or whatever, but it won't stick. So I'm going to have to glue it in. So what I'm doing really is making myself a hinge of sellotape. That's what I'm doing. So I need to stick it down to this side down here. This doesn't need any decoration because it's going into the back of the book. So I'm just going to stick it down with some double sided tape. You could use snail for this. I, I, I use snail. It's really uh, good. So right down the edge. From top to bottom. And then just make sure that's stuck. A bit of gentle persuasion. Get your a scalpel or whatever it is that you use pick up the top part and now we are left with a sticky bit and that's the bit that you want to stick your sellotape onto so it should be about half and half half on this half on nowhere at all so cut that off flush Right, so what, what ostensibly what I have now is my base, the base of the thing and a plastic hinge. I mean, yes, it's made of sellotape, but it, it doesn't matter anymore now. It's made of plastic. So we've got all the strength from the sellotape, but it's not it's not sticking to anything. You know, I can I, I can not stick the other page on for ages if I've still got decorations to do on here which I might have, because I might go around it and put blue around it. But what I would say is when we come to do this part, you just do the same. You put double sided down there. You stick that on, allowing room for it to flip. That's the important thing. And so you might find it easier if you want to rush ahead of me here to actually place that over the, over the piece and then you know, flop that on. So you will have a gap, but it will be worked out for you because it will already be there. Do you understand? I'm sure you do. So that's what we'll be doing next time. We'll be decorating this back and front. Um, I'm, I'm calling it a day now because it is, it is a day. Um, and it's just a question of going around these with glue. So we haven't really got that much achieved today. Um, but it's kind of always the way when you're starting something new, you don't, you're not exactly sure of the, deck, the route that you're taking. So that will all fit in there. And it'll be a nice little journal. We'll put something here, of course, and here and here, you know, leave no surface unadorned. That's the cardinal rule, I think. If you can see it, stick something on it quick. So from Tom Kitten, Justin and myself, thank you very much for joining us. I hope that you've had the best Easter that you could have possibly had. Um, I'll be back on Wednesday at two o'clock on YouTube. I wish you all the best and stay safe. Be sensible. See you on Wednesday. Thanks for joining me. Bye.